Can't get enough of Kelly and Rumya? We're now on YouTube for you to indulge in highlights from our show. Let's get into Curious Minds. We do this on the third Thursday of the month with Christine Malik. I'm Christine Malik, and this is Curious Minds, our dive into arts, culture, and science from a blindness perspective. Chris, I'm not sure how much you've played with this lately, but we're talking about the partnership between the volunteer-run Sighted Assistance app called Be My Eyes and ChatGPT's new image description function, uh, which I've been saying is a lot of fun, but also is just very helpful to have this as an opp opportunity. I've been playing with it quite a lot. Um, you pull this out in, in a party situation, whether your <laughs> friends are blind or sighted, and I'm telling you, it's a dive that you'll, it'll last for hours. Yep. It's absolutely uh, fascinating and compelling. It's um, a pretty big deal in, in certain portions of the blind community. It's taken the art of AI and description past a whole bunch of levels. Uh, it just leapfrogged right up into something quite, quite impressive. Mm -hmm. So for anyone who doesn't know, give us a brief explanation of what Be My Eyes and ChatGPT have done together. So Be My Eyes is a volunteer-led sighted assistance app where a, a blind or visually impaired person can uh, contact a sighted volunteer. The sighted volunteer can see through your camera and answer questions or give you uh, descriptions of what's going on that they can see through your camera. Um, Cat GPT has been in the news a lot. It's an artificial, an instance of artificial intelligence which um, has some shortcomings, has some strengths. And what has happened is these two organizations have paired up. And so um, within the Be My Eyes app, you can choose to call a volunteer as usual, or you can say, uh, you, you can ask for a uh, an AI generated description of a photograph either from your library or uh, from something you've just a photo you've just just taken within the app. Okay. Um, tell us more about how it works, but do you have to sign up, Chris, that you you know, I, I remember when the testing, I gather it's still sort of the testing stage. I thought I heard you had to sign up for it. They had to have you, like you know, more list. registered. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's the way it's true. It's true. It's still in beta. And so um, you have to um, apply. So within the Be My Eyes app, uh, you can apply to be a beta, you know, user tester mm -hmm. and um the waiting list seems to have gotten a lot shorter. There seems to be a lot of new people lately who've been um uh, um you know accepted into into being able to use it and so from within the app there's just a, a bunch you know there's choices you can call a sighted volunteer or um to ask to have the image described by the AI. Okay. Nice. You have some examples that you um have put together for us in to describe or to like actually get an idea of how this thing works. So do you want to tee it up and then we can play? Yes. So what I've done is um, had two photos that are just, you know, private photos from my library and I've run them through the AI and snipped out an audio clip from the results using voiceover. So what we're going to experience is uh, the visual image will be visible to anyone who's who's looking at uh, their screen, and you will hear synthetic speech from my phone, which is the uh, AI description of the photo. And there's a lot a lot to highlight here. So um, if we can move to displaying and hearing the first image, be my AI. The picture shows a beautiful and serene suburban setting. In the foreground, there is a lush garden with various plants. On the left. There is a tree with a white bark, possibly a birch, and a bush with bright yellow flowers. In the center, there is a large shrub with green leaves and some pink flowers at the bottom. On the right, there is a striking tree with fluffy pinkish seed clusters and reddish leaves. Behind the garden, there is a house with a dark gray roof and a red door. The house has large windows and is partially obscured by the trees. Next to the house, there is a paved driveway where a dark blue car is parked. The car has a shiny finish and silver rims. In the background, there are more trees with green and reddish leaves. 
suggesting that it might be early autumn. The sky is overcast, giving a calm atmosphere to the scene. So my there's a few goodness. things that I, I know, I know, right? The first time I experienced that, my head nearly Ooh. exploded because if you're used to something like Facebook, you get you get an image description <laughs> yeah, like well, of course, possibly yeah. outdoor and tree, exactly, right? possibly yes. a human no. being. Oh my god! Uh, Chris, can you tell us what, is this without saying too much? Is uh, like is this uh, the personal one of yours? Is it a particular place and or at least how accurate is you kind of tell us about what's striking because that's. That's really amazing, even down to it could be autumn. Right, right, right. So it's very detailed. It's a, a suburban street. Um, and I haven't had a sighted person listen to that description yet. However, um, you know, I'll, I'm just going to diverge here for a second. Uh, the audio describer, JJ Hunt, and I are going to be producing a podcast for the talk description brand this month on this feature. And the reason this is going to be great is that he's an audio describer. He's a sighted guy. So we're going to dissect these, some of a bunch of photos that I have. And so I can't speak to the actual accuracy of this particular photo, but what mm -hmm. strikes me, there's two things about this one that I thought were really interesting one is the level of detail right you got yes. you got the tree with the light bark you got colors you got shapes you got ident things identified like cars and it's very full and rich with detail um the other thing i find really interesting is it's not very it's not objective so mm. an, in audio description the mantra is sort of describe what you see but an ai is striving to be conversational and so it will use words like calm or beautiful or serene and uh this to me is very interesting i mm. i sort of have opinions about it i don't feel that it's the best use of that technology and in fact you can we're going to see in the next example you can have a dialogue with the ai you can ask it questions and give it feedback and several times i've given it feedback such as I think when you're describing for blind people, use of the words like serene or beautiful are, are not appropriate. And it will say, oh, I'm so sorry. That's right. You're right. And next time I won't do that. But it keeps doing it. So um, <laughs> there's there's a conversation. There's not enough people AI giving is... that feedback. Well, and, and, well and, or I, it's, it's just kind of almost like it's still being perfected to make the switch of different reasons to do descriptions. Like here, if I if I didn't know any better. It's almost like that kind of what you would find either in a book written by a sighted person describing a scene or what a sighted person looking at it would say, oh, gosh, the leaves look great. It's a beautiful looking fall day. Oh, look at the rims mm -hmm. on that car. Not mm -hmm, necessarily mm -hmm. just there to tell us what's there, but it, it's definitely to communicate that description in your mind. And it's a conversational thing. It is. Yeah, yep. it's a conversational it AI. That's, that's yeah. I think, the biggest point, right? Like, it's trying to strike this balance between knowing everything but not presenting itself as information. It's still trying to be friendly, I guess. Well, Maybe friendly yeah. is not exactly what it's trying to do, and but it is. is. It's trying to be more of a relaxed way. It's like talking to a friend right. who is very informative. And yes. the, you're going to yeah. grab the things the friends or people kind of normally would gravitate mm -hmm. to, I think. if so. And yeah. that's what I'd love you to ask, JJ. Is this stuff that really... You know, when you talk to sighted people and they're looking at pictures, everyone has the things that are going to jump out at them. They're a car buff. Oh, right. that's a great car. That's exactly. a 19 set, whatever. Right. right? right. Uh, it, it's almost like the AI is team. capturing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's ju let's jump into the second example because it Please. gives some sense of the dialogue that can happen. So let's uh, have a, che a check out of the second photo and description. Be my AI. The picture shows a large wooden covered bridge. The bridge has a rustic appearance with its wooden planks and beams. It has a peaked roof and the entrance is supported by large diagonal beams. There is a sign on the bridge that reads Irish River No. 1, Vaughn Creek 2022. Through the entrance of the bridge, you can see a small white building with a red roof, which looks like a lighthouse. The sky above is partly cloudy with patches of blue. To the right of the bridge, there is a road sign with a black arrow indicating a winding road ahead. The bridge is surrounded by lush green trees and there is a wooden barrier along the side of the road leading to the bridge. Inserted what makes the building look like a lighthouse? Be my AI. The building looks like a lighthouse because it has a distinct tower structure with a red roof, which is typical of lighthouses. The red roof appears to be in the shape of a small dome, which is where the light of a lighthouse would usually be housed. 
The building is painted white, which is also a common color for lighthouses, as it helps them to stand out against the landscape for ships. The combination of the tower structure with a domed red roof and the white paint gives it the appearance of a lighthouse. Inserted what about the sign makes it indicate eight winding road. Ahead? Be my AI. The sign that indicates a winding road ahead is black and white and features a series of curves in the shape of the letter S. The curves on the sign are meant to represent the winding nature of the road ahead, warning drivers to be cautious. The sign is placed to the right of the bridge, making it visible for drivers as they approach. This type of sign is commonly used to indicate that the road ahead has multiple curves and may require drivers to reduce speed and drive with caution. There's wow. so, so much I just learned context. A wow. I just learned a wow. ton. I didn't know that stuff, right? Oh, <laughs> my God. Lighthouses. I don't know what makes something a lighthouse, the sign. Um, and so what we, you know, the things we, we can highlight there are that you can have a conversation. There's yes. a message field. You ask a question. You send it. It comes back with an answer. And um, you can ask about the kind of things I did. Or you could ask it, where do you think this is? Or anything about the image that mm. you want to know more about. And then... When you do that, it gives you the opportunity for a bit of cultural literacy, right? Like I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard of those squiggly the lines. Yeah, yeah. It's like almost just oh. talking about visual memory. Like it's taking for granted mm. that people know things, even though it's what it's doing, ironically, is describing to us. It's also just uh, not necessarily understanding that some of the stuff is intuitive only if you have vision if you have visual memory mm -hmm. of these things or uh context i guess but without but that it's still able to and then when you pro probe it it's still able to say oh okay my bad uh here's why it's a lighthouse which is so useful yeah it's fascinating well, to have the process and you think down in the future will that process be related to google maps where it'll identify that building because if we more information the world puts into stuff, it will it's the machine realize learning. where it is and it'll say, oh, I know where this is. Well, mm -hmm. that is a because uh, right now you don't know for sure that's really a lighthouse. It's telling you why it believes it to be one. Yes. Well, and interestingly, just by coincidence, that photo, it's it's from New Brunswick and it is a lighthouse. Mm. But um, yeah. the a few weeks previous, I had submitted that photo and it didn't know it was a lighthouse. It said uh. a white building. And my friend's sighted friend said, oh, it's a lighthouse. So we told it, OK, this is a Machine lighthouse. Learning. And it said, oh, I see that now. Thank you. I guess because of the Lala. And then a few weeks later, it knew right away that it was that a, a lighthouse. lighthouse. So you can see it changing. You know, there's there's a lot of it's it's uh, it's evolving. It's definitely fascinating. Evolving if you sent it. that picture yeah. to someone else, they submitted under their name, I, and it picks up the same thing because of what learning it got that's, from you guys. That's the machine learning, and it's not yeah. just context verbally. It's no. context visually. It's everything. Everything that you feed it, right? So that's why I yes. said initially when I was making that joke of like Chris, not enough people gave it that feedback of, uh, you know, you're mm. describing this to a blind person because if enough of us did that it would consider that as a higher percentage uh, of should. context it's yes. true yeah. that's how it's that's how it's evolving exactly yeah. uh oh my gosh so much interesting context that we can even continue maybe to i'll cover into, this again next month because you could just go on and on For like right? the next six months yeah thank you so <laughs> <Yeah>. much <laughs> thank you Christine Malik on Curious Mind. Stay tuned for the uh, this conversation on the third Thursday of the month with her. Thanks for watching. You can catch Kelly and Rumya weekdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on AMI.